move this out of the way. <sighs> What's up, everybody? Unrest it. Back again, of course, as I would always say. And uh, just yesterday, I was preparing my wife's bag and stuff and all her things for her to go to the hospital because, as I said last video, that uh, she's actually headed to the hospital to have a baby. Nothing's wrong. It's just to have a baby, so no worries. But just to give you an idea of my dedication to you guys as fans, making a video on the night that my wife is in the hospital right before she has a baby. Now... I'm going to let you in on a little secret. It is already a painless birth that's been confirmed exactly what time the baby will be delivered, and that's not until afternoon tomorrow, so... Uh, and visiting hours are over, so I actually can't even be at the hospital right now, so... <laughs> Don't think I'm being, like, the worst husband in the world. I'm not. I'm just home. It's, it's actually... Cr it's really late. And uh, I thought, you know what? I'm... Uh, kind of free for the next couple of days. This will give me ample time to go ahead and make a couple videos. I should start tonight. To be fair to you guys and to myself, I should start tonight. And um, really what happened was recently when I was packing up for her, I was also cleaning because I like to send her off with a clean house. It kind of like, you know, if someone leaves their house when it's really clean and they know they're going to come back to a clean house and that really puts them at ease when they're away, at least that's how it works for my wife. And you want to do as much as you possibly can when you're sending a pregnant woman to the hospital to have a baby. Let me tell you, this is time number two, so I have a little bit of experience, and it only takes a little bit to tell you a lot. All right. Cleaning up, I found some of my old lessons that I used to teach at schools here. Wow. Now, I know I said before, hey, uh, I don't teach anymore, so I'm going to try and focus on stuff outside of teaching because too many people do videos on teaching, and it's true they do. Uh, I did too many videos on teaching, probably. I probably overly reiterated everything I ever went over and expanded on topics at least twice, if not more. So, hmm, whatever. But I do get a lot of emails about what is a lesson like in school. And that's kind of a broad question because, as I've said before, you've got a lot of different types of schooling that you teach out here, such as uh, in the ALT field, everything from kindergarten level on up to high school. You've got some people who can teach college, but they usually have a higher level degree above uh, just an uh, undergrad. And then you have people who really love doing kindergarten, international kindergartens, and work like that. Um, Kudos to those people because I can just not do that job at all anymore. I could never, I couldn't go back to teaching, but I really, really, really couldn't go back to teaching kindergarten. Kudos to all of you who work that uh, absolutely thankless job. You are underpaid and overworked. I don't know how much you make, but I already know you're underpaid and overworked and my heart goes out to you. Okay, anyway, let's take a look at what I've got here instead of me just rambling on and on and on. Um, low-level high school, mid-level JHS junior high school. Um, this is the book I found. And this is something I would highly suggest to all of you who come out here teaching. Save every lesson you ever make. Every single one of them, write them down. And put them into a notebook, as I have done. When I very first started here, I did not do that. And I regret that, because I would have a lot more lessons. Now, I don't work any more contracts for teaching, but I still do have a private here or there because private lessons pay actually quite a lot, you'd be surprised. I can make as much in one private lesson as I could almost make in one day at a school here in a high school. So, yes, a lot. Especially if it's an esoteric lesson such as medical or business. Um, so, this is low-level high school, mid-level junior high school, and I actually label each notebook so that I know what it's appropriate for, what kind of school it's appropriate for. This would be for kids who are medium level English speakers in junior high school in Japan, not in like a European country because they could probably almost be fluent at that point. Medium level junior high school in Japan means like uh, maybe they already know weather and they know some emotions like hot or feelings like hot, cold happy, sad, like stuff like that. It's, it's basic. And yes, the last place I taught was a low-level high school, 
a high school that could barely, barely, barely speak English. Um, even the English teachers, who are specifically only English teachers, that's all they teach, they don't teach any other subject, could not speak any English. So, again, I want to reiterate to you that don't come here expecting that everyone will speak English because that will be a very small percentage. Number one, lesson number one, this is Hoko no jugyo, Hoko koto no jugyo. Directions lesson. Saisho, tatte mono tango, benkyou shimashou. First, let's go ahead and study building words. Like, not building words, but words that are titles for buildings. Tatte mono, building. Okay? So you can see most of these lessons, I know how to say completely in Japanese. I could probably go through this entire lesson in Japanese. Because honestly, I had to teach almost entirely in Japanese. When it's this low level of English, if I come into the class and say, Hey, good morning everyone, how are you? Today we're going to go ahead and learn about buildings. Everyone would be like, Eh? Eh? Okay, that's all you're going to get. Um, and this right here was a worksheet. Uh, I copied it out, I printed it. You can open it up here and see. It's a little greasy and dirty now from the glue that I use, but... It was actually a worksheet. You can copy it then later, hand out worksheets in class. I would suggest you make a lot of worksheets for whatever class you go to or whatever school you go to. The teachers will love you for that. Even if you make worksheets for when you're not there, they will love you. Here's another example, okay? This one was buildings that connect to jobs, okay? All right, shigoto no jugyo, job lesson, okay? Um, for that, you want to stick to some very basic jobs. You don't want to get too crazy. On this one, I had like post office, mailman. Okay, don't try to do something like coffee shop barista. People would be like, what the hell are you talking about? Okay, don't get too crazy with that. Next one was injury and sickness. Okay, injury and uh, being sick, This the experience of being sick. Um, and this goes from everything to um, one time I, and they have to give me a keiga koto or a byoki koto. Okay, so that means one time I tell me an injury or one time I tell me a sickness you had. Okay, that's a, a very basic sentence practice for high school level students. Okay, how's it going? All right, this was the how are you Genki Deska lesson, okay? Uh, the Kibun no Jugyo, feelings lesson, okay? Right here you can see I have a bunch of different faces. I drew all these faces, and then we go over Kibun no Tangyo, which is um, the vocabulary for um, different feelings. And then they have to write it underneath the face. What do they think it matches? For example, I think we have here Mad, happy, scared, cold, sad, worried, so-so. So-so is their favorite. You're probably going to get so-so about 90% of the time when you say, how are you? Okay, next we're moving on to, what else did I have next? Oh, clothing. I'm pretty proud of this worksheet. Check that one out. You see that? I drew all the clothes myself. I'm pretty proud of how well I drew that. And then on top of it... Where is it at? Where is it at? Oh, yes. I drew two people that they could dress up. This was really fun for them. So they got to learn the clothes and then dress up their own little characters like dolls. Okay? You might think, like, well, that's really immature. Well, you might be teaching some immature kids. I'll put it that way. That's the nice way to put it. Okay? Next, I did a family lesson. This shows them uh, the different names for family members, such as what a brother, sister, nephew, niece, uncle, nado, 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 etc., 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 is. Okay. I let them make their own family tree, and they could write in the names of the people in their own family. This one I would suggest you be a little bit careful with because if people have had family members die or have been in a tragic situation, you can check before you do this lesson, okay? Just check with your teachers. Say, hey, is it okay if I do this? This is a family lesson. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have them write in their names. Do you think there's any class where this wouldn't be appropriate? And they'll totally understand why you're asking that, okay? They're not going to be like, well, why? I don't get it. These teachers are smart enough to get that. They understand. 
But that's what I wanted to give you, is just a little rundown on some examples of lessons and worksheets that I made for students here when I used to teach. Um, one last thing, this is probably what your schedule will look like. You see you have the days of the week written in, what classes you'll be teaching on days, and usually you'll get two or three depending on how many schools you have. Um, some schools make you get stamps, okay? You have to get stamps on your sheet that show that you've been there. Those stamps need to be from Kyoto or Kocho Sensei, principal or vice principal, okay? And uh, usually you have, um, it's not like a contract sheet, I don't know what I would call it, a contact method form. That's what this one is called. And I'm not going to put it on here because I really don't want to show the last company I worked for and all their contact information because that could lead to bad things. You don't really want to show that kind of information on YouTube. But what it has here is like contact info for your dispatch manager, people sending you to your different schools, usually your school's phone number as well. Always, always, always contact them if you're going to be late. Things do happen with trains here just last week. I had two different times where I used JR, that's Japan Railways here in Osaka. One time we had on Wednesday a person jump onto the tracks. Train was late by about 40 minutes. And uh, next time we had, and this is, I never knew this, this is a katakana word. Signal trouble. And that's signal trouble. Okay, wow, they were really creative when they came up with that one, huh? And uh, that was... Uh, trouble with signals that slowed the train down by three freaking hours thanks JR not like I wanted to go home anyway that's enough for today I'm gonna go ahead and chill out and uh, maybe have a sparks and retire for the night signing out I am unrested this is JFAC I will see you next time